Hi everyone, I'm sitting in my sister's 2017 Chrysler Pacifica minivan. She let me borrow it for a five day adventure. I've been traveling around and seeing sights and having adventures with this car for the last several days. It's been a lot of fun. I flew into where she lives. I'm not gonna tell you where I am or where she lives or what I've been doing. You'll have to wait to see what I get up to in future videos. But I wanted to show this video first, a tour of my setup in this rig first so that during the following videos, the videos where I'm out doing things, you won't have questions about my setup in here. Basically, I thought it would make sense to show you the setup first before the videos, even though I'm filming this at the end of the adventures, the end of the travels. Does that make sense? Here is the minivan in question. My sister and her family lovingly call it Red Rover. And I'm in this beautiful little park boat launch area on the banks of a river. So let me show you the setup that I have going on in here. This car is super fancy compared to my cars. Press the button and the door opens automatically. Wow, like magic. So here's the back. Got this big bag, this smaller bag, another little bag, a backpack, lots of bags in here. And then this is the bed. And then here's a look at the front. So I flew in to where my sister lives and I flew in with this bag checked and this bag as my carry-on bag. We're not gonna get into what's in this bag too much. This is my camera bag. It has a laptop and lots of cameras and batteries and cables and all sorts of things in there. It's not super interesting or super relevant to the topic of this video. That topic being flying into a place and then borrowing or renting a car to go on adventures in. Now I'm borrowing this car, I didn't rent it, but I think basically everything I talk about will apply whether you're borrowing or renting. So let's start with the bed here. Underneath the sheet are several layers of mattress, of camp mattress. There's one kind of foamy one here, another one here, and then I think that's a yoga mat or a Pilates mat. And they're all covered over with this twin-sized sheet. And then I've got a couple of pillows right here and then two different sleeping bags. So all of these things I borrowed from my sister. But if you're renting a vehicle, you could easily buy that stuff at a place like Walmart for super cheap or at a place like REI if you wanna get fancy and spend more money, or you could bring those things with you. There are all sorts of camp mattresses out there, especially the inflatable ones that will easily fit into a, a, a checked bag, into checked luggage. The same thing goes for camp pillows and sleeping bags. All of that stuff can be bought when you arrive at your destination. I mean, I could buy all of these things at Walmart for I mean, you could probably get a mattress for 20 or $30, get a sleeping bag for $20, a couple of pillows for $10. So I mean, we're looking at $75 maybe for all those things. And if you get the cheapest versions, it's probably less than that. So not a huge outlay of cash here, especially if you're flying in to your destination. I did fly in with all of my clothes. So my clothes were all in here, but I transferred them into this bag, this neon fluorescent green bag. So that is just a packable bag. It collapses up into its own little pouch. And I brought that with me because I figured that more organization is better. I figured that instead of having everything right in this one thing, it'd be nice to have a little bit of separation. So I put my clothes in this and it's nice to have clothes in here and then gear, other stuff in here. And then as far as this goes, this is my hiking backpack. So that, um, I mean, it's a pretty small backpack. It It's not a, not a, travel backpack really. It's not a collapsing backpack. It's not packable, but it is just small and light enough that it naturally lends itself to that. So that was also in my carry-on or my, uh, my checked bag here. This is a Jackery. This is the Jackery Explorer 160. This also is something that my sister had, and I thought I would need more power than this, but I really don't. In fact, I don't need anywhere near this amount of power. I did bring two or three other battery banks with me, they're in here and in here. Uh, small ones that can charge a phone a handful of times, and that would have been fine on this trip, actually. I did not need this, but it was nice to have. I just charged it up as I was driving, and then at night I would use the, the USB ports over here to charge my various camera batteries, mostly. And then I used the, the 
120 volt outlet here on the side to charge up my laptop one time. This is my toiletry bag, and that's been a handy place to have it. It's nice and accessible. Again, that flew over with me in the main checked luggage. I've got some shoes here. These are kind of camp shoes. I actually flew with these on my feet, and then my hiking shoes were with me once again in the checked luggage. Now let's talk about window coverings. So when you pull up to a campsite at night, you want to block out the windows so people can't see in, so you feel nice and cozy. I had a couple different ways of doing that. So I made these. I asked my sister to buy these for me before I got there so that I wouldn't have to go to the store, but you could easily just go to the store, go to Walmart and get these. Let me show you what these are. So these are window coverings that I made out of black poster board and black foam board. For the back window, the large rear window, I used the foam board. The store didn't have a ton of black poster board, which is what I had initially asked my sister to get. And so she got some foam board in addition to the poster board. You can use either one or a combination like this. doesn't really matter. But I cut these pieces very, very roughly to fit in the back rear window there. And then I cut these other pieces again, very roughly. Like these are not perfect fits. They don't need to be to fit other windows. And then on each one I wrote with pencil back left, middle right, that kind of thing so that I would know at a glance which covering was for which window. And so with these you just kind of press them into place. Like that. And again it's not fancy, doesn't look especially good, and there are some, some little gaps around here. But for me, I don't need to be totally obscured inside. I wasn't stealth camping, I wasn't staying in cities. I didn't need it to look like no one was staying in there. Basically, I just wanted people not to not be able to, I don't know, walk up and see me or see me as I was doing stuff inside. Not that it really mattered in the places that I camped, but anyway, it took me about 20 minutes on the first day I flew in at my sister's house to, to cut all the pieces and get them in the, in the right spot and make sure I had everything covered. If you were doing some stealth camping, you'd probably want to spend a little bit more time making sure the fit is nice. And whenever I wasn't using them, I stored them over here alongside the door, kind of between the door and the seat. And I guess I should say probably the, the most important thing. So with this car, which is basically a more up-to-date Chrysler town and country, they don't make that anymore. This is the newer version that they make. These seats fold into the floor. It's called stow and go seating. Let me see if I can reveal the seats to you here underneath the multiple layers. Okay, so underneath this, this right here, this is the back of the seat. And when it's up, it looks like this. So there are two bucket seats behind the first row of seats. These fold down into the floor and the back bench seat also folds down into the floor. So we did not remove any seats here. They're all just in the floor currently, except for this one. I wanted to keep this one up. Figured it would be nice to have a, a little, I don't know, a little spot to relax and sit. I haven't used it much on the trip. I used it once, but it's nice to have it there. It also makes for a nice partition between the stuff in the back and, and the forward section so that all this stuff doesn't just slide around all in the back of the car. Not every van, of course, has the stow and go seating. And so if your rental doesn't, that's gonna be a little bit tricky because you're not gonna remove the seats. You don't wanna do that. In some vans, I know the back seats can fold down and the middle seats can fold down. And then you could put like a piece of plywood. You could go to Home Depot 
have them cut a piece of plywood to fit on top of there, and then you could put your mattress on top of that. It's much easier in SUVs because in an SUV, in a lot of SUVs, that second row of seats can just fold forward and it might not be completely flat, but it'll be level enough. And then you can put your mattress there. This channel of course is called SUV RVing. My focus is SUVs, but I have featured some minivans on the channel in the past and basically everyone that I've talked to either removes the seats completely or they have the stone go seating like this. And on that note, it's not completely flat in the back here. So I don't know if you can tell it's higher here than it is down here. There's a slight dip right here, a slight slope. It's a couple inches higher back here. And in practice, it really wasn't an issue as far as sleeping goes, I slept just fine. But I did find that after a full day of driving around, the mattress will often slide down here and it'll be pushed up against the seat here. And then depending on how the campsite is situated, whether it's flat or on a little bit of an incline, it can also slide down during the night. So last night I just started with the mattress down at the bottom. I moved it down there so that I wouldn't go anywhere and that worked fine. But even if it slides around underneath me at night, it's not a big deal. And then as far as window coverings for these windows go for the front windows. So my plan was to have these cracked a few inches each night so I could have some air circulation. But that means that I needed some bug protection. I needed some screens in the windows. And so I used these. These are, oops, one of them just dropped. These are marketed as shade screens. I got these off of Amazon. They were 15 or $20, not too expensive. I'll put a link in the description here. But let me show you how they go on over here. They just, they just slide on, it's super easy. It's basically just a, a pocket, an envelope. And you just slide it over. It has rained almost every night of this trip, I think. And there hasn't been much water that's gotten in when I crack it just a little bit. I don't have the the window deflectors the, that you can buy, the aftermarket ones that you can buy to go on here, but it still worked okay. No water, no significant amount of water got in through the open windows. And so this is something that you can buy and bring with you on your trip in your checked luggage. Same goes for this. So I use this on my Yukon and this is for the front windows. And by front windows, I mean the windshield. And then to close it again, you just twist as it goes down and there's a little elastic loop you can use to secure it. And then here in the front passenger foot area, these are all things that you can just pick up when you get to your destination. There's a fly right here. Water, some food in here, paper towels, tissue boxes. And then this, this is just my jacket. And this is a seat cover that my sister had in her car. I think it was originally on one of these back seats. That's where the car seat goes. So I think this protects the fabric of the seat from the car seat. But if you are worried about getting the seats in your rental car messed up, you can get these off of Amazon for pretty cheap and bring them with you. And speaking of bringing things with you, I also brought this. This is a cup holder phone mount. It's magnetic. My phone has a magnet thing on the back. I really like the magnetic phone holders. So I brought that with me and I also brought this. So there's a standard USB thing on that end of the cable. And then here, this is a handy dandy cable that has three cables in one, micro USB, USB-C and lightning. So it's really handy. And again, I'll put links to these and to this thing in the description. You'll probably want to bring something like this, one of these on, on your trip with you, something that gives you some USB ports. Not every car has built-in USB ports. This van does, so I haven't been using this, but I did bring this just in case it didn't. And this spray bottle back here, I bought that at Walmart on the road a few days ago. 
I use these for brushing my teeth. I can wet down the toothbrush with that and, and clean the toothbrush with that. I didn't want to cook anything on this trip, so I didn't bring a stove or pot and pan or anything like that. If you wanted to, you could bring that stuff with you in your checked bag. Again, if you buy backpacking versions of those things, hiking versions of those things, then they're very small and compact and will definitely fit in a large checked bag. As far as food goes, I ate out every night for dinner, and then during the day I just ate um, just stuff that I got from the store, crackers, jerky, I got some honey roasted, peanuts, that kind of thing, snack food, basically. And then in addition to cooking, going to the bathroom is the thing that people have big questions about. As far as number one goes, I like to have a pee bottle with me so that if it's late at night, I don't need to open up the door, let bugs in, you know, put my jacket on, go outside into the cold. I don't, don't need to do that. So what I have, it's in the, in the door cup holder right now. Just a, a Powerade bottle. I used this as a pee bottle. It worked just fine. And then for number two, I figured that I would just be around enough trailheads, gas stations, fast food restaurants, you know, places that have toilets, visitor centers, welcome centers. And that proved to be the case. I didn't need to poop in the woods at all on this trip. If I were to do it again, I wouldn't do it any differently. I, I didn't bring any stuff and I didn't need it and I wouldn't bring that stuff again. Uh, the next time I do this sort of thing. As far as what else is in this big bag, a lot of it I didn't use, but there are books and notebooks and my big down jacket is in there and I have another tripod in there. I forgot that I have my dirty clothes in here, so I also brought this bag. It's a, just a drawstring dirty clothes bag. That's been helpful. I brought one of those super cheap Ikea bags. I thought that might be good for putting wet things in. I haven't really needed it, but I'm glad I have it. I brought fishing gear. I have fishing stuff in here. I, I didn't use that on this trip. What else is in here? Yeah, books, notebooks, notes, sunglasses, sunglasses case, some more cables. Nothing too interesting. These have been super handy on the trip though. I have a headlamp that can be charged via USB. And then this is a little solar lantern that I bought from Walmart a few days ago. It's fine to have just a headlamp, but I found that it's nice to have some just ambient light in here instead of the, the narrow beam of your headlamp. It's nice to just have some light everywhere instead of just where you look. And so I bought this from Walmart. It was $10 and it's actually a really nice little, little uh, lantern. Let me show you. It's pretty compact and you just pull it apart. There are a few different lighting modes, low, high, and blinking. On the side here, you can charge this via USB. Uh, let's see, that's micro USB, which I really like. And then there's that USB type A port, the standard USB port, so you can charge your phone from this if you want to. And then a little solar panel on top. I really like that you can charge it via USB. That's a great feature, I think, so that I don't have to worry about charging it from solar. I don't have to worry about sticking it on my dashboard while I'm out hiking or anything like that. I can just plug it in for an hour, and I'm basically good enough to the point where I don't need to think about it again. And then as far as the van itself goes, I really like the huge sunroofs in here. It just makes the van very open and clear and bright feeling. I really like the stone go seating. There's no clearance on this thing. There's very little ground clearance on a minivan. And that's my biggest complaint about minivans in general. That's why a minivan would never work for me. I would never buy a minivan for the types of adventures I do. That's just a deal breaker. It definitely took me more care and more time to find campsites that were suitable for this when I was out driving as the sun was setting. I was definitely more stressed about it than I would be if, it were, if I were in my, definitely my Yukon and even my RAV4. Even a RAV4 has just way more clearance than this and much better attack angles on the front and back you know, here and here. It's just, just better for the kinds of things that I normally like to do. But on the upside, just a tremendous amount of space in here. Minivans are great for having just a ton of space. This thing does have a vacuum built in, which I thought was pretty cool. I haven't used this, but my, my brother-in-law was showing that to me and I thought that was really neat. Overall, it's an awesome minivan. I think that, again, in general, minivans aren't for me, but if they are for you, then something like this, this uh, 2017 
Chrysler Pacifica. It's just an awesome little van. I really liked it. I think that'll do it as far as a tour of this rig goes and my setup in here. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any questions about my setup in here, or if you have any questions about, you know, using a rental car or a loaner car in general. I might not have all the answers for you, but I'll do my best. And uh, the great thing about my channel and about the, the comments section is that people help each other out. So even if I can't answer your question, other people might see it and, and be able to answer your question there too. So thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Be sure to check out Adventure Know How, my new site, where you can gain access to a map of all of my free campsites, plus monthly bonus videos that you won't find anywhere else. Learn more at adventureknowhow.com. And for links to everything else SUV RVing related, visit suvrving.com. Links to these sites and more will be in the video description.